So we discussed that uh, uh, nucleophilic substitution on uh, benzene ring is highly unlikely under the normal conditions under which we use. This reaction can however occur under fairly drastic conditions. So when you take bromobenzene and uh, react it with uh, sodium hydroxide uh, fuse, this means you heat it up to very high temperatures. The product that you form is phenol. Similarly, when you take bromobenzene and uh, react it with sodium amide in, in liquid ammonia, the product here is uh, aniline. So this uh, reaction can occur, but you need uh, extreme reaction conditions for it to happen. And not only that, the reaction mechanism is also very interesting. So the proposed mechanism, the first step involves the reaction of NH2 minus with, uh, you know, it picks up a proton and leaves behind a carbanion. And this carbanion can actually undergo a rearrangement in the following manner and produce the corresponding alkyne, which is known as benzene. Okay. So this benzene is the alkyne equivalent of benzene. So as you know, an olefin is usually referred to as an alkene and when you have a triple bond, this is referred to as an alkyne. So similarly, this is benzene. So benzene intermediate is very interesting and so this benzene can then further react with NH2 minus and it produces the carbanion once again. And keep in mind that these are fairly extreme conditions under which this reaction can occur and this eventually picks up a proton and gives you the final product. Okay, so you can convert bromobenzene to aniline using sodium amide and liquid ammonia. Okay. Now, if you want to understand the, the structure of these benzene uh, compounds, uh, what we need to, to see first is let's, let's examine the, the first carbanion that is produced. So, when you look at the uh, structure of the first carbanion that is produced, uh, I'm going to redraw the, the intermediate in the following manner. So, basically, this is the uh, sp2 orbital. And now, when this sp2 orbital sort of moves in here and kicks out bromide, the product that is formed actually has an unconventional pi bond. So you already have a pi bond over here and this new pi bond is actually formed in the following manner. So you have this sp2 orbital and this sp2 orbital and they actually overlap and give you the triple bond. Okay. So it is not a, like a conventional uh, pi bond that is formed, but it is more likely a double bond that is formed with sp2 orbitals being overlapping with one another. Now the interesting question is that when you have substituted compounds, what would be the outcome? So when you start with uh, let's say uh, methoxy benzene, which is basically anisole with the chloro in the 2 position, the product that is formed is actually the OME and uh, what we are doing is we are doing NaNH2 in liquid ammonia. Okay, And the product that is formed is in the following molecule which is 1 comma 3 substituted product okay so here you start with the methoxy at one position and chloro at the two position but you end up with methoxy at one position and aniline at the three position so this is another piece of evidence that suggests that the benzene mechanism is actually in play there are other pieces of evidence which are available for the formation of the benzene. Okay. Now let's look at the proposed mechanism for this reaction. So the first step as we have already seen would be the 
So let's keep uh, methoxy at the one position, chlorose at the two position. Okay, so the first step would be the loss of this hydrogen to NH2 minus and the formation of the carbanionic intermediate. Right? OME. Cl. All right. Now the next step would be the loss of the chloride to give you the potentially key intermediate, which would be the benzene. Okay. Now you have two possibilities for attack. So this is the key intermediate. Now there are two possibilities. NH2 minus can attack from this side or it can attack from here okay so this is going to give us possibly two products wherein you have a one two attack or a one three attack that is the with respect to the methoxy group the attack happens either at the two position or at the three position okay now let me just draw this uh, intermediate once again in the next page so that we can look at it more closely Okay, so OME is here, double bond is here, and here is the triple bond. Okay, so now let's look at uh, both the intermediates that are formed. So NH2 minus attacks here, and the negative charge moves over here. Let me just draw that out. OME, NH2 is here. And this negative charge is here okay so the rest of the molecule remains intact so in this structure there are a couple of issues so one is that uh, there is going to be some possibility of uh, a steric hindrance uh, in the attack because of the methyl group so the two position may not be very favored the second uh, issue is that the negative charge is quite far away from the methoxy group that is it is meta to the methoxy group and therefore the methoxy group does not have an inductive effect, you know, electron withdrawing inductive effect to stabilize the negative charge. On the other hand, if the attack happens on the other carbon, so which I'm going to draw again here, OME, so if the attack happens at the Three position which results in the formation of the carbanion adjacent to the methoxy group. Now we have at least solved one problem which is of sterics. So the attack uh, you know the methoxy group is quite far away from this position so therefore the attack doesn't necessarily have a steric hindrance and also the electron withdrawing nature of the methoxy group by induction plays a key role in stabilizing this negative charge. So taking these two into consideration, we can help rationalize why the or we can help rationalize the result that we got wherein the NH2 group is actually meta to the methoxy group in the product. Now let's consider another situation where we start with The substitution occurs in a 1,4 system. So you have, let's say, R here and you have Br over here. Now, when you react it with NaNH2 in ammonia, the product that you get is actually a 1 is to 1 mixture of these two compounds. So that is the three position as well as the four position are going to give you approximately 50 percent yield. One is to one is the product ratio. So this is relatively easier for us to explain because if you think about it, if when you draw the, the intermediates, you have the benzene ring here 
and now the attack can happen from here or from here okay so nh2 minus can attack here or it can attack here okay so neither of these attacks are going to be sterically hindered so they both are quite far away and as we discussed the major effect is actually the inductive effect of the electron withdrawing group and that also is quite far away for these two so therefore the probability of attack on this is is more likely equal and therefore you get a 50 to 50 mixture of the products now lastly uh, we want to look at the reaction of uh, one more piece of evidence for the formation of benzene so when we start with COOH and NH2 and do a diazotization reaction on this so uh, when you do a uh, you know NaNO2 and uh, HCl you can produce the diazonium salt here in triple bond N plus COO minus okay so if you generate this under the appropriate conditions then what you could do is that you could then add base OH minus and uh, what it does is uh, it uh, converts this carboxylic acid to the COO minus okay so you have the uh, formation of COO minus and N triple bond N plus okay so now when you heat this up to high temperatures what can happen is that you have a loss of uh, carbon dioxide C double bond O O minus okay so you can have a loss of CO2 and this subsequently can move here and kick out nitrogen gas so the intermediate that is formed is the benzene okay so this is a very nice way to to produce benzene and obviously the benzene is not uh, very stable so when you generate this benzene under these conditions what you do is you do a cycloaddition reaction so the cycloaddition reaction can actually happen the following manner you can detect this in the mass spec the cycloaddition reaction so you can do this in the following way and the product that you get is okay so basically it's two benzene rings fused to one another okay so the m by e ratio that is the mass to charge ratio is 152 for this and you do detect this in the mass spec so what this experiment tells you is that the benzene is likely an intermediate that is formed you can also trap this uh, benzene using other cycloaddition reactions and it's routinely used in synthesis so together the formation of benzene is a very important sort of synthetic route that helps us substitute benzene rings albeit under extreme conditions